find it in the underground, some kind of green yourself. The Swedish title is Man Tänker Sitt. I don't know if that communicates in, to you. It's, it's really to break yourself free. Uh, and I want to like to lift the castle above ground. Uh, I used the, in my own mind, I used some kind of uh, Orpheus and Eurydic uh, idea about going into the underground, bringing something up to the above ground into life. And these ideas, these thoughts, these longings that I didn't have any answers for, there wasn't any film or anything that I knew about at that time that would answer these or, or, or comfort these longings. Uh, so I started with them, and at the same time, Approximately, I was down and I was developing these thoughts, writing them down in the south of Sweden, where my grandmother used to live. And she was going into a senile dementia state of mind. And once, one time, I, I used to turn the volume off when I wrote. I had uh, 60 missed calls. 60 missed calls. Uh, and I looked at the phone and oh, it's my grandmother. I got a call. And I called and she said, did you hear the boom? There is water on the road. In my husband, my grandfather, but he was dead since long. As evil as this, he was lying on a bed on this ship that was uh, tilting, and he wouldn't give me a hand to crawl up. Uh, it was very real to her. It was really like a premonition of something to come in her life. It actually came quite the same with her death. We, we shot the movie, actually. Uh, and uh, so, so I went down and I met her, and we started the conversation. That for me. For me, it was very interesting. It was not. Uh, I, I understand that there is a clinical description of the the, the 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 sickness or the mental state when you're going into sin sin at dementia. That your thoughts are cut off and everything. But for me, the experience of her was really. I was so curious about where are you now, because she was dream and reality at the same time, past and present at the same time. She thought that was her older um, cousin who she looked up to very much at the same time that she knew that she I was the son of her daughter that she didn't care so much about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she cared for us but it, she, she's always been very secret, never telling us. And I've asked her sometimes, Grandmother, why are you like this? Why are you this uh, strung up? Or I could just get a sense that she was very lonely, very frightened. And I combined this these longings with somehow her situation. And I started to develop this Marianne character. Uh, I, I, I gotta say also, <coughs> I'm very thankful for you being here, for your staying. So if you have any questions, I really enjoy the meeting when this film meets an audience. So if you have any thoughts or uh, where you just cling on to something that you experience that you want to give to me, I'm up to that. How familiar are you with yoga? Um, I've, uh, I used to study to be an actor. I studied to be an actor and had yoga, uh, worked with yoga, but I, I'm not into yoga Cause, so much. Because the philosophy was kind of, could have a nutshell, Oh, that film. Yeah. Yes. We went, we took like uh, experiences from many different ways. For me, the, the great longing, I can see now when I, today I listen to a uh, Swedish uh, poet called Bruno K. Öyer. He, he just made a new book, I can read it. So he was talking about this. I, he's so much more developed person than I am. He's, he's, fat, fat. he's really a shaman. He's gone down to the underworld and he's come back and his words, they really transcend. Uh, but, but a great longing that I had, that could be a narcissistic, narcissistic longing, but I was longing for some kind of human evolution that we could possibly break into a more holistic way of being concerning how we relate to each other. Oh, that was a longing, and that's very subjective and probably has only got to do with me and my own civil problems. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I feel like, you know, it can, it can be very, when you try to take this big grip, you can really... Uh, but uh, we took a risk, and uh, this is... It's very concrete. I mean, a film, though it's an abstract film, this, this 
it's the running time mm -hmm. is what you see. So uh, we borrowed from many different, and I think it's from Vedas and Sutras. And I, I, I think that longing is universal. Yeah, yeah, probably. It's not about you. Um, no, <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> so you're not a narcissist. No, <laughs> I hope so. No, but yesterday I had a young man who uh, really questioned the film, and I, I got to say, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you you got the idea for the for the effect of the drug about the dissolution of identity and everything. You got it from your grandmother's um, uh, dementia. Uh, it was interesting in, interesting portrayal because uh, here the, the the dissolution of identity is, it, it kind of is a very serene and kind of uh, healing experience. Where in, in reality it's often like it's, it's it becomes kind of aggressive and everything. But mm. That was the origin for the, I mean, I was just curious about where is she, where is the self, yeah. how is it traveling inside of her, and she was very, it was scary for her, mm -hmm. she started out something and I was, boom, black, and I was not her older cousin, mm -hmm. uh, so, but I started from that, and I went into, um, I, went, I mean, that was like original, this is something I want to dive into, and I met uh, Lars Tonstam, Swedish social, Social professor in social law mm -hmm. professor. Uh, he he's been studying to make uh, uh, a better way to treat the old people in our society, mm -hmm. and he, he made qualitative deep uh, interviews with older people living in these homes that they can go to sometimes, and he discovered something that he thought was very interesting, and he put into a, a theory that has been accepted. It's called the the ninth age of us humans. There was a person who said that humans have eight ages, and those ages have this uh, contradictory situation. I mean, that, that, is, that is the fight for that age, and then you transcend it to the next age. But he su suggests the ninth age, and it's called Gero Transcendent. Gero Transcendent. Gero Atric is like the study of getting older, of aging, and Transcendence is Transcendence. That is the combination. And for me, that uh, I mean, talking about yoga, it was just very interesting and and, and a happy. Uh, I shouldn't say it's a happy end of the journey, but it's a worthwhile. I mean, it's it's something worth staying around for. It might happen when you're 90, for example. And if this is his studies, it's very theoretical. But he says that 10% of the people living in the Western world reaches this state. And what happens then is all these signs, you, 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 you become less afraid of your own death, the extinction of yourself. You experience yourself much more as a chain, not only in a chain, uh, as a ring, not only in a chain, but maybe in a chain mail, mm -hmm. uh, in a hole. Uh, you can talk about experiences that you can look at a flower and you can like, just experience everything. Th there are some different, very good sounding, uh, uh, effects of that stage of age. And many people who reach that, and the relatives, the children, or the persons, they, they're afraid, are they seen? How mm -hmm. can they be so childish so all of a sudden? What happens? But what happens, what he suggests is that they got all ages in them at the same time. And that was what I was looking for in the main character when I was doing yeah, the whole construction the, the, and, and the casting, to hold the whole, all ages at the same time. And, uh, and th that is a state that might be something that you look for in, in different uh, Eastern traditions. Uh, but, but the good thing I think that he told is, because I asked him, you yourself, he was 60, very taught person, are you, are you, how do you feel, are you close to it? No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so how do you get there? Do you get there by studying these heavy uh, writings from human experience? No. Uh, do you get there from maybe yoga or meditating? No. Uh, that, this is his conclusion. You get there from the imperative of living. Of living. Uh, and from the persons he saw that transcended into this are people who have maybe hard lives, but who went through this crisis with, uh, they went through the crisis. They didn't go through, the, because as my grandmother did, she went past her specific price, I think, or 
you can just try to put something around the crisis and keep it not dealing with it. So his suggestion is that if you go through crisis, you can come out and you will be accepting the circumstances of being a But I mean, you, you can possibly be a young person and have that kind of identity as well. I guess, but then, but probably it's different when you're looking at it from the perspective of the end of your life or something. Yeah, like and he said that this is just studies, so it's, it can be just something very stupid. But from <laughs> him, what he said is that a fantastic thing is that it's getting lower and lower in ages. People in the 40s can he, he sees that in the study. I think it sounds like a good. It was just a good um, for me. It just put up a good goal that I could put up on the wall to say, oh, okay, I. I I take this study for, this is good study for me, it helps me in my, <laughs> my thesis. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I, I experienced that it's not about the age, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, some people can go through this thing for the early age, depends on living, but I'm interested about your grandmother, because you say, what in, came to me the film also, that he, she, she did a bit go around, then face this uh, moment in a very old age that actually doesn't happen very often. Well, it might happen, but um, because the defense is very strong in the old age, it might be even stronger than in the young age. Uh, but what was the story about? Was, was this how it happened? Uh, if you could call it a spiritual experience, was it like uh, there was this? Uh, Was this the true story that happened? This is a construction from something I wanted to develop. And I used my, the, 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 the whole origin. As she was, well, it's an older woman, might have something to do with it, when I met my grandmother. I was, it was yeah, very, very clear to me. I wanted Hero to be an older woman. Very hard thing to finance when you come to say, an older mm -hmm. woman who's about to die. This is very hard. I mean, people are like, really. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, but, but I, I was very clear to me that this is the person, and uh, I, 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 what I'm really curious about is this character development that, for me, I, when I have my influences, it's not at all obvious if they transcend, but for me I had a great uh, character journey in uh, uh, Wild Strawberries, Smoke on Stella, in my Bergman's film. Oh. His face expression in the beginning of the film, saying goodnight to the who has this, who takes care of him, and from the face expressions, with very mild face expression in the end. And I, I just wanted to go from this dead uh, face, dead eyes. And it's just so, it's just the imperative is live, my suggestion, and uh, that uh, this cliche that after rain, there will come sun, if you enjoy sun more. <laughs> but uh, that is uh, that, that was what I wanted to construct, and we used different. Because I asked Tunst, I lost Tunst on the professor, because I wanted to know: is there any? Could there be any like if there's a really heavy freight train, train running on the side of you? Can you just change track like that? Can that happen? And he thought that maybe not. It can maybe happen, I don't know. People are losing their e self. It, it can happen, but he said, I don't know. We don't think so. So we took the inspiration was also from the suicide clinic in Switzerland, Dignitas, where they, they, they were not allowed to have a permanent address. There had to be a mobile home ah, to I do know. this. Uh, okay. But we wanted her, it was very important for her to come back to life, not to go into the so, so it's so this psilocybin treatment is something that they use in the U.S. for persons who are clinically very depressed and who have a death. They know that they're about to die, or maybe they have passed the time that the doctor said that you you, you will be dead in three months. Okay, it's in three months and a week. What about how do I spend this time? So that that's a, I combine those two elements, and then it's just. We also experimented with mushrooms uh, <laughs> doing this, uh, uh, and I think it was a great experience. But 
I don't promote the drug and drugs at all. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Really transport on the film that she was doing the release or in a happy. Yeah. As you said that they, in the beginning of mm -hmm. the film, it was quite sad. A picture of the play, and in the end, it was more like a happy picture. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, really, for me, really, I can feel her when I see that my, for myself. Uh, I would like to uh, move on to what you just said. Uh, the film is surprising on many levels. First of all, so you have the picture of somebody making a last journey, unable to know what is going on, but he, he decided to go for this journey. And then in this journey, some things, some questions come up and some answers come close, but at the end, the person comes back from the dream, or let's say from the experience, and symbolically taking a range to go on to live. So I think this is extremely strong. And also in the text, for example, when you spoke about, when she spoke about that she was sitting inside of a, a, a well and she saw the light. So this idea of hope, that whatever your um, position in life is, hope is always there, how, how distant it is. And this is also very surprising. I expected the film to be more uh, psychedelic. Mm and to be more lost. Sometimes it, it's nice to be lost, but it was nice on the end, I would say, to collect this, um, to follow a uh, different part, and to, to, to have its own rhythm. Uh, I would really appreciate the slow rhythm of the film. Thank you very much. The, the, the main uh, taking mushroom was very important with doing this film. I know it might sound, fun, sound funny, but it was a holistic experience. And we, the, the, there are many psychedelic films from the 70s and everything, but that that was not what it was like. Maybe L I never tried LSD or you know, DMT, but this was mushrooms. And uh, it was, this is the state of, this is the perception, what we call it, the mushroom logic. We wanted it to be that kind of pace. From our, the, the Frederick, who I work very close with, we, this, we share this experience. And, and also this with the well, because um, I have a strong longing, and it, it maybe has to do with my father is really this, uh, he's from 1940. He's part of this Sartre existentialist. We are stuck in the bottom of the well. We will never get up. We can scream, but no one will ever get And then there is this Martin Buber from how I read him. It's, we are able in the, in the middle human or interhuman contact. It could, some, if I don't have any, uh, like, I shouldn't say capitalist, but if I don't have any other purpose with you other than to meet you, there could, he suggests very easily, uh, it's not that he says it, but that there could, something could happen that relieves us from our existential longings. So that was what I wanted to, that was the longing. I don't know, if you perceived hope, I'm really, really happy with you. Thank it you. really makes me happy. Because <laughs> I was staying. Well, I would have a question. Yeah. Um, you were saying, well, now it has been talked a lot about the uh, interhuman relationships and, and so on. And now in the film we saw her trip to her own consciousness and mind. So what will happen after now, after she has kind of realized, uh, well, some things about herself? These three months that she has left, how will she actually use them? Is this, uh, how do you see I this? think she, I, I, it's just that, you know, I, I'm in the middle of my own life, so I don't know, but, but I think that you can perceive time in different ways. And I think she will have a strong experience of being uh, alive. And um, perhaps uh, also if there are some uh, close relationships to her, her two children, maybe she will make it good that she can live that, those relationships uh, in a good way. Um, that's how I think. And I think that time can be very extended. Uh, so you can say just three months, but, but that, that was the purpose. But it's, this is what we would think of a small amount, but it can also be everything. Mm -hmm. well, another kind of question, where is this film made? Where is this? We were looking for, actually now I contradict myself, but existentialistic landscape where you cannot hide, where you will 
get hurt when you just walk out where where the wind would blow right through you uh, and we we have funding from the west of the sweden we have a film fund called film west and it has this this um, uh, this character it's rocks but, but it's the start of norway it's it's west coast from up to norway and it didn't ever really get get to us we wanted a house we wanted the house of the houses we wanted uh, the road of the roads, or there were some writings. I had trees, naked trees, in the beginning in the in the script. But then, and we looked for long. I was asked why it took so long time to make this movie. But we didn't find it. We looked for such a long time because we had strong funding on the west. Uh, but then we were invited to Rogaland. Uh, it's in Stavanger, and in, in the area that's a film farm. And we met up with a great uh, location scout who was really, who got a great uh, understanding. Now I gotta say it's also drug romantic. I don't uh, indulge in drug. <laughs> oh yeah, I can. But he, he's <laughs> play, he played death metal anyway and rode really fast on these narrow, narrow roads. And we came up because he said, I think I know what you're looking for. <laughs> and then we asked for the road to this house and they said that there is only one road. And we came to this house, and all of a sudden it was very clear to us all the right thing that you had, all your ideas, all your thoughts about what it would be like if you just open the window and throw them out, it was there. That they started to speak back to me. Uh, so this was the exterior in Rogala. Very expensive to shoot in Norway, extremely expensive to shoot in that part of Norway, but to bring up trains. Mm. So we shot the interior in the west coast of Sweden. And we also built an exterior inside the interior. And that we did in, in the company. And we've been in Germany as well for the autobahn. So could you be a bit more specific about the interior location? So the, the, the house is beautiful. Mm. So could you tell us where it is? Yeah, it's in it's called Lysebotten. It's the town. It's in the it's in the um, Lysefjorden, I should guess that the fjord is called. Is there anyone from Norway here? No? It's a fjord, going from Stavanger. Yeah. And in there, there is a, we live there, and then there's a serpentine road going up to Lysekammen. And that's the area where this house is. It's called uh, the Eagle's Nest. That <laughs> house. It's a restaurant, actually. <laughs> but we got to rebuild it somehow, and we used some exteriors there from, and we used and some interiors in that house, but it's not as yeah. fantastic as the house that we build up. <laughs> but we, I, I was looking for some kind of cubistic experience of a house transforming. She's going inside of her own story. So. But but it's um, what, what was the specific about where it is? I it's like the ceiling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling in the dinner room <laughs> with the I'm Japanese. Sure because I, yeah, the yeah, yeah, but they were our own. Yeah, that, that was the, the roof in the room in Gothenburg had those mm. quadrants back here, but yeah, inside. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. And where did you get the fireplace? The fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, where where the fire is? I got to see the. Fire. <laughs> no, 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 it's in the house in Gothenburg. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, but it was fun. It, it's like uh, really trying to reinvent something like a house. That's it. That's it. But then when we were developing this, quite close to shooting, uh, Terence Malick's film uh, Tree of Life came. And that was really, you know, I said that there was, I think he, brought many answers to me, or a film that I really wanted to see. And he had all these fantastic ideas. He built this house, you know, this house that they have in that film, they built it, I think, four houses, turned in four different ways, so they always can have daylight from every angle, in every room, in every house. It's just something else, uh, and like, I don't know how many, I, I can have, like a million meters of film, and they had, we, we use some of their ideas to have one steady cam loaded, one dolly, one hand camera, 
wants that to. Uh, it was like, oh, no, it's this happening. Now it's this little butterfly. Let's go for that. <laughs> so, so it was amazing. So we had to take away some pictures. We did it so good. I mean, I can like cliches like footsteps in the sand being washed away by the waves. <laughs> or uh, like a, a, a door, what's it called, to a fence where you have horses. That's done. It's like clapping. <laughs> if you do that good, I think, and I think he has some of those pictures. It's really enormously strong. Yeah, anyone else? I'm really happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.